Triple E EDC back again with another knife video. This is the Protec PDW Invictus. Now I'll get to this knife in a second, but I want to go ahead and show you this one first. This is the, I'm sure you guys know this logo. This is Chris Reeve Knives, and it is a Damascus, um, a Kasser Ebony Wood Damascus Basket Weave Damascus Sebenza. Now, this knife is completely unused, brand, brand new. I mean, it's it, it has a birth date, I think, uh, late 2018, early 2019, but um, brand new, never been used. And this is the giveaway knife, or, or the grand prize giveaway knife for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway that's going on right now. If you guys have ever been part of giveaways, I don't think I've ever seen this level of grail knife on a giveaway. Wanted to do something big for you guys. Uh, this is there, so don't... Uh, you can't enter on this video, but I wanted to let you know that there is a video. Uh, if you go back one video or two, uh, just look for the 1,000 subscriber video and go ahead and do that. Subscribe to the channel. Enter that giveaway. There's four other great knives in that giveaway. Um, you're going to like all of them, but uh, that obviously is going to be the grand prize and go check that out. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this knife. So this, like I said, is the Protec PDW Invictus. Now, this is an out-the-side automatic. It originally was sold, uh, well, the design itself is a Prometheus Design Works, or PDW Design. They have their own website, and they sold it, it was made by Protec, but, but they sold it exclusively through their website originally. The original version had a glow-in-the-dark uh, button instead of this red G10 button and it had contoured handles. You can see these handles are flat, even though they're milled out. Uh, I believe it had the same steel. Now this information I got, I got from, uh, directly from ProTech. I actually emailed them to ask them about which steel it was because the steel wasn't listed on the blade here. Uh, and I do know from other knives that I've had from ProTech that they do have uh, 154 CM steel on a lot of their knives. This is the uh, ProTech Whiskers, uh, Whiskers 2, ProTech Magic Whiskers, Magic 2 Whiskers knife. Um, and, uh, I know that they normally list the steel on the blade, that they normally use 154CM, but I saw some conflicting, uh, information on some websites between whether it was 154CM or CPM 154, uh, which I, which I'll go into in a minute, but I emailed them and asked them about, you know, which steel it was. They got back to me. They said, this is 154CM. Uh, but then they gave me a little bit of history on the knife as well. So that's where I got that history from. They also said there was a couple of, uh, uh, what a version of this that was sold directly by PDW that, uh, also had a red G10 button, but has, um, MIL and then a, a serial number on the back somewhere. I don't know exactly where it was. Um, but, uh, that was one that was sold directly by them. Uh, PDW, I guess, didn't reorder, and ProTech kept getting a whole bunch of requests for this knife. So eventually, ProTech worked out a deal with them. They, I guess, licensed the design from uh, Prometheus Design Works and now sell it through their normal uh, dealer channels and um, produce it just like it's one of their other production knives, uh, like the Magic 2. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about the, uh, well, actually, let's do some size comparisons first. So this is an out-the-side automatic, as you just saw. It has a really nice kick to it. We'll get to that in a minute. But some immediate size comparisons. Let's take a look at the uh, Spyderco Para 3 and the Para Military 2. That's usually our standard, you know, uh, knives that most people are familiar with. So you can see it is uh, pretty much, you know, spot on for the most part with the Para Military 2, maybe a little bit smaller than the Para 2. And then, um, you know, it is uh, noticeably larger than the Para 3. This is it up against the Shaman. So you can see it's a very similarly sized to the Shaman. Blade's slightly smaller, but the handles are approximately the same. And why don't we put it up against that Magic 2, so you can see that. As you can see, my Magic 2 is well loved. Here are Benchmade Griptilian and the Spyderco Ikuchi. And you can see, as far as depth of handle, it's a little bit uh, less depth than the, um, or, or height, I should say, than the Griptilian, but it is more height than the Ikuchi. And probably the best two comparisons, the knives that this immediately made me think of when I got it, 
are the Benchmade 940 and the Benchmade Anthem. As far as shape, um, you know, these are, and it made me think of the Anthem more so than the 940, because as you can see, the Anthem's a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, um, and uh, it just made me think of it as a uh, automatic version of the, uh, of the Anthem, where, not a version of the Anthem, but a close enough uh, approximation of the Anthem, which is actually interesting because um, Slicey Dicey, I think, uh, I don't know if it was him who originated the uh, comparison or somebody else, but um, he compared the 940 to the Benchmade Mediator and uh, mentioned that the Mediator is essentially a an automatic version of the 940. So anyway, um, this, uh, uh, this does have... Let's go ahead and talk about some of the good and the bad of it. Uh, so first of all, right off the bat, the kick on this is excellent. I mean, ProTech just, there's uh, there's pretty much nobody, you know, better in the business than ProTech at, at the kick on an out-the-side knife. I mean, even Microtech, which has great, great out-the-side knives, I mean, ProTech is just, is just top of the line. Um, and uh, there's not really much more to say about that. That kick, when it lets out, um, it's just, it's there. You can hear it. I'll do, I'll be quiet for a second. Yeah, you can really hear it. And you, feel, you can feel a jump in your hand as well, which is, which is quite nice. Um, so it does have a lock up here. Um, I have never been a fan of locks on uh, out the side automatic knives or dual action um, automatic knives, although those don't usually have locks. Single action uh, out the front knives are really the only things that I appreciate a lock on for the most part. Um, but yeah, for in, out the side, I don't really love it most of the time. That being said, it doesn't bother me on this knife uh, at all, and it does bother me on a lot of other knives. Uh, I guess it's, part of it has to do with the placement, you know, because my hand's right here, and I really can just, you know, without moving much, I can move it up and down while still maintaining my finger on the button here. So it's, it's the placement of the of the lock is really good. If you're into locks, it's there. If you're not into locks, you don't really need to worry about it because your finger is just going to go right past it and be on the button. So... You know, from that perspective, I think it's it's excellent. Um, excellent placement of the button, excellent placement of the lock, uh, and great kick, like I said. Another thing that I really appreciate about Protex, um, and I have had several other out-the-side out the automatics, is not only is the kick great, but it's just so smooth the entire way when you shut it. It's smooth in, it's smooth out. If you want to open it slowly, you can feel how smooth it is. And that's one of the reasons I think it kicks so hard is because it's just really so smooth in and out. It's actually the only, um, you know, before I got into Protex, I really didn't like, you know, having to, I, I didn't like out the side automatics actually, because I didn't like having to, you know, re put pressure against the knife. I enjoy, you know, the fall shut action of a knife. I enjoy that, you know, so um, obviously in a, you know, on an automatic, it's not going to fall shut because you have a spring against it. But it, it's actually quite, you know, um, pleasurable, for the lack of a better word, uh, to go ahead and, you know, close it with how smooth it is. And, you know, so whereas it feels like a chore a little bit on the um, Magic because it's a large knife and you've got to sort of walk your hand up it to do it based on the design, um, to do it with one hand, to close it with one hand. Here, the opening and closing is is very easy, very intuitive. Uh, just the shape and the design of the knife, you know, works very well. You don't have to move your hand at all to close it, which makes this, you know, and, and I, this is what I love about this knife. It makes this a fidget-friendly out-the-side automatic, which is great. I, I mean, I, I'm blown away by it. It's absolutely fantastic. The other thing I really like about this uh, is the um, the clip on this. Protect does great deep carry clips. They're a little long, uh, admittedly. They're a little long. Uh, this is not the only one. It's pretty much the same clip as as what's on here. Um, but despite being a little long, they just function really well. They're a nice deep carry. They have countersunk screws uh, on here, so th the screws do not catch on your pocket. I mean, the design on this is just excellent. You've got Jimping on the back of here, um, you've got uh, the milling here, gives excellent grip. Uh, it also gives it a nice look. You know, the, just the overall design of this knife, everything about it, uh, well, I shouldn't say everything. 
much of the things about it are, um, are excellent. Uh, now, something I guess I'm going to say uh, I'm neutral on, maybe it's good, maybe it's, uh, um, maybe it's bad. So I talked about the blade steel earlier. So the blade steel is 154 CM, which, you know, in this day and age, a lot of people don't love CPM 154, 154 CM. Um, I actually really like CPM 154 normally. I don't have a lot of knives in 154 CM. Um, for those of you who don't know the difference, uh, the um, 154 CM and CPM 154 are pretty much the same chemical recipe, but CPM 154 is the uh, pa um, powder metallurgy version of the 154 CM. And what that means is they, uh, they basically take you know, the, the chemical composition of it, it's in powder form, uh, and then it's, it's uh, made into a steel from there, which means that all the carbides and everything are evenly distributed throughout the, the metal. Uh, whereas if you look microscopically at you know, um, 154 CM, uh, they're not going to necessarily be even, evenly distributed because of the heating process and uh, and and how the, the steel comes together. I'm not a scientist. Um, you, you know, uh, it it doesn't create an even distribution, which can create you know, which can possibly create um, you know, uh, uneven uh, results with the blade. That being said, it's really a minor concern. Um, and, uh, you know, from ProTech, ProTech explained that the reason they use 154 CM versus CPM 154 is uh, in that specific steel, that specific chemical composition, the differences between 154 CM, that, or the practical differences that a normal user will, will experience are negligible between 154 CM and, and, and CPM 154. And therefore, uh, the they wanted to, pass the savings on to the customer. So that's that's their expl explanation. That was also their explanation for why they uh, decided to go with flat handles instead of contoured uh, when they made their production version of it uh, that was no longer an exclusive for PDW. So, um, all right, now let's get, go ahead and get to some of the bad. Uh, so as far as the bad, um, you know, I originally didn't think I was gonna like the the button here. There's a lot of good inlays that ProTech have, has, um, and you know, I, I sort of envy the Mother of Pearl uh, inlays and things that they put on some of their knives. But, you know, after getting used to this, after, you know, having this for, for a little while now, I actually really like the um, the G10 uh, button. So, um, you know, is it the best button in the world? No, and so that's why I'm sort of putting it in the, you know, uh, not good category, but, you know, maybe more towards the bad. Because really, I prefer something probably a little bit different, but it's not bad. It's you know not unattractive, um, and uh, and so that's um, just a consideration. Uh, the other thing that I uh, you know as far as the bad goes, I will mention there are a couple different types of screws here. So there's two different sizes. I think um, I don't think they're the same size. I haven't tried it, but as you can see, the pivot is is a hex pivot, and the body screws are hex body screws. You know, now that I look at it, they could be the same size, um, but it's just something to keep in mind because then the clip itself is a Torx, if you can see there. So, um, you know, that that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, you have two different uh, sets of hardware there, and um, and and that is what it is. Uh, so the other thing that uh, you know I probably mention is um, I I like the fuller here for the design. Um, and I like the, you know, the general blade shape. I think it's attractive. Um, but I'm going to mention it here in the, in the negatives because even though the stock isn't too bad, it's not, it's not crazy thick. It is thick enough that, you know, when, when this comes down, you know, you don't start the, the descent into the, into the edge until a little bit above halfway down, maybe I'd say two thirds, um, of the way up is when it starts. And so you don't have a lot of time to get to a very thin edge. So this edge reminds me a lot of, you know, and again, I don't have the, um, I don't have a caliper or anything, but it reminds me a lot of the edge on the, on the 940. You know, a lot of people complain that the edge on the 940 is a little thick. Um, I personally have no problem with it. And the 940 is one of my all time favorite knives. Uh, but you know, it, it's going to be a little thick for some people. So it's not the best slicer in the world. Uh, but I find this to be overall um, very, uh, a, a very useful blade shape. 
Um, it pierces very well. It has a you know a nice reinforced tip here. Um, but again, people don't like the fullers sometimes because they you know can attract dirt inside the fullers. The cutting edge is a little thick. Um, so I'll mention that in the uh, in the drawbacks. Um, one thing that I didn't cover earlier was the ergonomics. The ergonomics here are really really good. Um, you know, I, very very good. The jimping lock on top locks you right in. It's not overly um, overly aggressive. Uh, the the handle here, you know, is is a nice straight handle for the most part. Really only one, you know, cut cut in for your finger. Uh, I really like it. As far as the choil up front, um, I will say the choil is a little uncomfortable. Uh, to choke up on it. Um, it's, it doesn't dig into your finger at all. It won't cut your finger, um, you know, unless you have massively huge fingers. Uh, but, you know, and, and your thumb sort of does fit into this part of the blade after it drops. Uh, that being said, the back part of here isn't the most comfortable when you've got it in this grip. So, you know, I'm just calling them like I see them. So, Overall, um, oh, one other thing, that, uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is the price. So the price on this is two hundred eighty dollars, and that is a lot of money for uh, an aluminum body knife. This is aluminum. Uh, this is not, uh, you know, it's aluminum body knife. It's one fifty four cm. You know, not not a super steel. So it's two hundred eighty bucks. So in the world of automatics, that's actually not terrible, uh, and Protex are often worth it. And I will say that I do think this is worth it. But there are going to be people who buy this and say, Triple E ADC, what the hell are you talking about? It's aluminum, it's 154 CM, it's not worth it. Well, I'll tell you, I, I think if you get it in your hands, you know, uh, you'll probably change your mind over time. But, um, uh, and especially if you're someone who likes, you know, the, uh, the Microtech knives, the, the Microtech SOCOM Elite and things like that, those are also aluminum knives. Um, they do have a more premium steel, most of them. Uh, but, you know, those are, those are knives that generally people will um, really, really appreciate. They're good hard use knives. This does feel like a good hard use knife, good hard use automatic. Um, and uh, frankly, even at $280, I'm going to highly recommend this knife. Um, if you're into out the side automatics, this is on the buy list for sure. Um, you know, I as I get to carry it more, uh, I have a feeling it's going to grow on me even more. And uh, I would keep a watch out at the end of the year to see if this makes my top 10 knives of this year. So um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, go ahead and drop a uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you if you have this knife. Um, also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you get all my content. And if you haven't already, like I said, go to that um, giveaway video for the 1000 subscriber video and enter for a chance to, to win a CRK, CRK Benza, I can't even talk right now, it's late, uh, CRK Sabenza 21 with a basket weave Damascus inlaid by Devin Thomas. Uh, thanks so much, guys.